Hey there viewers, my name is Trinsky and welcome back to another DCSS Sunday stream. Today we're going to be continuing our usual journey, of course, of trying to get our victories with every species in the game here. And surprisingly enough, we have somehow managed to get ourselves a four victory streak here out of whole odds, especially considering how some of the runs went. But we're going to do our very best to keep that going as today we hop into draconians here so we went over the aptitudes briefly at the end of uh, last week's session but the main things are just that uh, I guess what it says here that they mature when they reach level 7 and they gain a color which will shift around some of our aptitudes maybe change some of our priorities depending on what we see happening and I guess we'll check out the rest of their kind of innate species bonuses when we hop in here. So let's pick a draconian to start out. And then now for what background we should choose. I was putting a little bit of thought into this and while I'm usually partial to picking one of the elemental backgrounds, I kind of like having a bit of a theme to go for right off the bat. It might be a better idea with draconians in particular to go with conjurer off the start here go for something that is one of the more generic spellcasting schools, just solid damage all around. And then once we get our color change a little bit later on in the run, that might inform us a little bit as to where we may want to switch into as, it, as the run progresses further. But that's enough talking about it. I think we will just snap pick that. And... I mean, if I'm doing my normal naming conventions here, the most obvious and straightforward one, which is not especially creative, but it happens to work out with the background as well. So I think we're gonna go with Draco here. And Draco the Draconian. Apparently his parents kind of hated him a little bit, wanted him to have to be slightly embarrassed about his name. But there we go, hopping into the dungeon here and like last time, first things first, before I completely forget, I'm going to quickly dump the save here and we'll pop over and make sure we put the seed in so I don't ever forget that again. Go here, we go here, edit this thing. Even though I've done it a few times now, I'm still never quite sure if I'm doing the right thing each and every time. But that looks like... It's all in frame. Oh, no, it is not. One digit got lost. So let's uh, transition there. And that should be that should be good there. For anyone who wants to potentially play along at home or even just after the fact, experiment a little bit in a dungeon. They know what's coming. Uh, there it is. But now we can start on the run here. So we've been playing a few different um, melee attackers lately, at least in terms of background. And we've kind of kept that throughout the runs since usually in a three rune if you're starting out as a, a sword and board you're not gonna have that much time to branch out into spells more usually more useful for the longer games but excited to see if we can keep a spellcaster alive through the start of the dungeon here that's always the hardest part and when we are trying our very best to get a little bit of a streak going would be nice but Starting as in Draconian here, we may as well talk a little bit about what we get. So, unfortunately, we'll jump down past the first one. We cannot fit into any form of body armor. That's due to our, our tail and our wings and all kinds of body mutations, so that makes sense. But in order to kind of weigh that off and balance it, and what makes us not an expert species right off the bat just because of that, uh, are the, our scales here. So we start off with 4 AC and then I think we get a bonus one every three levels or so. So it amps up over the time that we spend in the dungeon here. And then lastly, something to keep out or keep a lookout for, maybe, depending on what we run into, is the fact that now we're cold-blooded, much like all the reptiles that we're usually so happy to find in Lair when we're playing an Ice Elementalist. Well now we're gonna have to be a little bit careful that we don't get slowed by any ice magic shenanigans out there but we will also as per usual hit the the slash key and then go through here and just tick off a few of these just in case always off the start it's nice to have some throwing stuff 
and all of these vocables will definitely come in handy or hopefully come in handy i guess we'll have to see how the run goes but okay we've been playing so many fighters lately that i also kind of forgot just how little we start with as a wizard i mean back in the day you used to at least get a, a spell book in your pocket but nowadays that's all just done mentally instead but okay whew. first enemy it's always a little bit tricky especially when three magic darts don't kill it that's when we start getting a little bit desperate hopefully it doesn't happen with an enemy that has a weapon so fortunately this kobold still not quite as dangerous as it could be but i don't want to bring any undue attention so maybe we'll back up into here i'm gonna play this super carefully just in this first little bit well we only have three um spell points or magic points i guess they're calling this one i always just want to say mana but i know that every once in a while games like to get a little creative or i guess just take inspiration from different sources as well could be an explanation for all that but okay i'm gonna put on a pair of gloves gives us a nice little bonus one armor class whoop whoop and then i'm would like to take a weapon out of a monster's hand because that way we know off the bat whether it has any enchantments on it but i might risk it and worse comes to worse we'll just have to wait out a curse scroll but it's not like we can do any real damage with our fist right now and it's a plus zero whip so that's good whips are a nice uh weapon to have on a wizard here because even with no training they're decently fast at the very least and they hit decently often even though of course yeah we won't be dealing too much damage anytime soon in physical combat there we go level two gives us another two points of magic we should also maybe just take a quick peek in our spell book here uh, in order to just talk a little bit about the conjuration spells because we haven't actually started a conjuration background run uh, on stream yet but this is or was one of my favorite uh, backgrounds to do back in the day I guess I keep contradicting myself because I did just talk about how partial I am to the the elemental classes earlier this run but I guess maybe I'm just not quite aware of my own history with the game as I thought I was or just depends on which year I'm talking about which phase of returning to DCSS but uh, the main things to keep or to take note of here in the conjuration starter book is the searing ray level two here i'm probably going to learn this right away this is actually a really solid spell the cool part about this one is you cast it out and then you can choose to keep channel casting it and as you do that it increases in damage so if you have a bunch of enemies lined up in a hallway and you can just keep them walking in through the blaze as it gets stronger and stronger that's pretty awesome but the next things that I'm really excited for here, Fulminant Prism is supposed to be the way to go, and I'm sure it is. I still need to figure out some of the, the tips and tricks of using it without just attracting too much attention and not dealing quite as much damage as I'd like. But Iskenderun's Mystic Blast is one of my favorite spells because this is really nice defensively, just in order to, it will uh, push enemies backwards that are adjacent to us and that will definitely help us try and keep out of melee range in general keep our squishy little selves alive but i'm going to pick searing ray to learn right away here and that will be on hotkey b perfect so that is a nice little deterrent for early adders and stuff running into an adder with just magic darts to make your way through it isn't quite the situation you want to find yourself in but searing ray at least gives us a chance to just keep ramping it up until it's likely to kill something in one turn not that we won't have to play a bit cautiously of course we are still a spellcaster start here gonna be a little bit squishier than i'm used to at the very least I'm also very curious which uh, DD choice we'll end up going with this time around because we could try out another one of the kind of straightforward spellcaster um, deities, those being Vehemut or Sifmuna. 
but you're definitely not completely nailed down to those just by choosing a kind of caster direction in terms of uh, background and or training on your character. Because there are definitely a few different gods that even their auxiliary effects uh, will still greatly help each and every character that decides to worship them. I guess we already kind of saw that in Che, because that's a, a god that no matter what background you start with, you end up being a pretty tanky character with the ability for spellcasting as well if you desire it, no matter what if you're playing as Che. So I guess now is where things will start to potentially make themselves uh, visible in this regard, I guess, or make ourselves aware of it, because on D2 here, if we find a nice early altar, it's always really good to pick those up, just in order to allow yourself some early extra PD gain. This buddy's almost dead, I think I'm happy to let him come into range, and I'm curious. Oh, not what I expected. I thought that more of these little hobgoblin buddies were going to pop up from the south here. Because I'm guessing with the large group that we just stumbled across uh, down here, that looked like a pack that would be following either Robin or Ijib. So I'm guessing we have maybe the first of our unique fights waiting for us down there. But nobody followed us out, and we at least took out some of the forces, and in fact, continuing to stretch them out here, and there we go, confirmed that we have Robin here. Well, I think what I might actually do here is just back up to this beauty of a hallway, wait some turns. That's pretty much exactly what I was hoping for, because now we can show off a little bit of Searing Ray. So if we pop this off, it will launch down here. And then you can see in our little text box that we just need to press the period key and it will fire off again. And I think we can do this a couple more times. You can just watch in our little status effects place here to see if it's still pumping up the ray. And there we can see the strength of it as well. But there, we'll actually cancel here because it does continue to use mana as you channel. And I just wanted to let these enemies actually approach so we weren't wasting any of that as they were uh, too far away. But even a, a standard ray is doing pretty solid against just hobgoblins. I guess I wasn't quite thinking of how lower mana was this early in the game there. We don't really have multiple casts of something like that. But let's take one of these friends upstairs with us. That should work out perfectly. At least compared to some of the more, I guess, just straight spellcaster species, something like uh, Deep Elves. Draconians with their bonus AC from their scales do fare a little bit better in the early dungeon in terms of not worrying that each and every hobgoblin has the chance to just murder you in a few turns. But we're going to continue to be a little bit cautious here because as we just were talking about, not a whole lot of mana yet. It's always just a race to get to that tipping point for when your spellcasters are able to fully sustain their their spellcasting power, I guess. Hello, Bat. Are you coming? There we go. Don't want to deal with you out there. Perfect. Still no altars yet, but I don't even think there's any guaranteed of a D2 altar. Just the earliest they can show up here. Oops, walking towards enemies as well. That's probably not the best idea at this stage still. Ooh. No, right? We cannot wear helmets because we have horns. Got a little bit excited there thinking it might be another piece of auxiliary armor that cuts the, uh, or makes the cut or what we're allowed to wear here. I guess it's mostly just body armors that are the issue. Ooh, and in fact, would you look at that? That's exactly what we were hoping to find right away here. I guess depending on what it is, but plus one hat, that's pretty solid. It's a nice, again, little boost to our AC here, because even seven AC is pretty decent 
for this early in the game on a spellcaster especially i was gonna say especially even one that's not wearing any armor but that's not really saying much when it comes to draconians okay they're still too far away i kind of want to use searing ray on the worm oops i'm hitting five to try and wait turns it's not how that works okay we have a couple of them now Ooh, let's make sure i'm far enough away that should do it perfect it's nice when the enemies are that much slower than you for sure not that we'll always have that luxury in fact i'm just waiting for the first adder here i'm su surprised we haven't seen one already at this point okay rat we'll probably just walk up should also take a peek at how our spellbook and skill gathering is gone here conjurations are ramping up nice and fast here was the plan we pop into here. We almost have magic dart at full power because that will just make the early dungeon here a little bit easier since that's still what we're using for the most part. And getting some extra damage on the Syrian Ray, of course, is a nice little bonus as well. But there we go. It's our first adder, and I think Syrian Ray will be our go-to here. Just needs to hit a couple times to work. And there we have it. Dart Slug, let's close the door on its face. Wait out here for a bit. Oh right, it can't open doors because it's an animal. I was waiting for it to pop through. I kind of forget about that sometimes. It's kind of hard to open dungeon doors when you don't have any kind of hands whatsoever. Ooh, Fedhas has a D2 altar here. So it is a possibility. I don't know how interested I am in joining Fedhas on this character in particular. What I'm most, or the type of character that I would usually think most about taking Fedhas on are um, like ranged, like hunters or throwing based ones, because it's really nice to be able to put up a lot of barricades that you can pass through and just gain distance from your enemies. Definitely wouldn't be nothing, but I think I'll pass on Fedhas for now. I guess we can kneel and take a quick peek as well, just for anybody who's not quite as familiar. So yeah, the walking through plants and firing through allied plants is what makes him quite awesome when paired with, yeah, somebody who's using slings, bows, crossbows, those kind of things. Um, and otherwise, yeah, I actually don't have too much experience with the, the higher level PD things. I don't know if I've ever won with a Fedhas run or gone very far with one, I should say, in general. So... It will come one day, but I don't think on this character. Draco is looking for someone, I don't know, a little more destructive maybe? Fit with the, uh, the Conjuration School of Magic that we've decided to uh, commit our lives to learning here. Another glove, I'm guessing it's just another standard one. Ooh, I'd really like some of these to hit, please. That's not great. Okay, so even with just a few of those Siren Rays going, unfortunately, it's immediately time to think about this a little bit, just with the possibility of never really hitting the snake and getting some badly stacked poison when we're pretty low on even potions to try and just blindly chug away and cross his fingers for. But want to do Siren Ray again, but I don't know if that's the right call. Maybe we'll try a few magic darts. Okay, we just barely made it through with a single hit on us, maybe two at the max, but oh boy. Yeah, we did get hit twice, which is poisoned once, I guess. But that is why headers are always scary on D2 for these kinds of characters. I guess almost anyone except for like gargoyles. And I guess most of the undead things, but mummies don't really fit the bill because you're still potentially going to have a whole lot of trouble with the first adder you run into on a mummy. But okay. Keep making our way on down. I'm going to keep checking in here every once in a while just to see how the failure rates are coming down. I guess I could learn IMB. And then that gives us the possibility of also training a little bit of translocations. It's always the issue with these trot or cross school magic spells 
Hmm, elementalist, a conjurer for today, actually. Normally, I would have gone with an elementalist. I actually was mentioning that as we were deciding on the background. But I thought it might be kind of nice to start our draconian off without an elemental school of choice. And that way we can see what uh, color our scales turn at level 7 here and kind of play into that a little bit. Try and take full advantage of the unique feature of our species here. And we don't have a whole lot of space for uh, dancing away from this buddy. Probably should have just used Searing Ray again like we did the first time we ran into one. And there we go, they've healed up completely. You know we'll keep running around just a little bit here. I want a few more pips of mana and that should maybe do it. It's embarrassing if it doesn't. Come on, Draco. <laughs> That's too bad. And so we keep dancing. Maybe firing off our darts. I guess we could throw in a little bit of throwing here, maybe. I was actually originally thinking of just trying to give a couple hits because I, the worm can't kill us in one hit at the very least and we can always still run away if things start looking grim. But I kind of forgot about the existence of things other than magic that are arranged. So fortunately we had a bunch of these throwing instruments around and that will help us out in those situations. Here let's just back the heck up. I'd like to get a really nice Syrian Ray that's hitting both of the Snacks. Oh wow. Killing both the Snacks, I should have said. Not too shabby. Also, that's bad practices from playing too many melee characters. When we wait around corners, let's not wait right next to the corner because we actually want some distance between ourselves and the enemy now. Even if they are boomerang throwing. Ooh. Well, things just got a wee bit interesting as we fall into a shaft and drop three floors. Okay, so we say, see stairs right away, and that's awesome. We're then immediately distracted by another early artifact trident. Is my game seed generation broken or something? I feel like I'm getting an artifact trident on the first few floors of the dungeon every single turn. Or every single run here. Okay, this is dangerous. Shouldn't be doing this. Wait out the ant. I want this. Thank you. Getting a wee bit greedy here. But we saw the ant, just hope that it turned the other way and it did keep walking. So let's step up here. Still don't necessarily feel comfortable wield IDing this trident right here. Maybe if we see a scary enemy pop up in the next little bit here, we can use that as a bit of an emergency situation. Hey there, Koyer, how's it going? Oh, and I immediately just didn't even notice as we ran into exactly such a situation. So let's do a, uh... oh, oh, it's X. V, there we go. Want to remember what this buddy does. A few of the basic spells, elemental stuff is always scary this early in the dungeon here. But Ustachio as well, so we could get a whole bunch of summons clogging up the way, and we're not supposed to be here. Hmm. The question is, should I just start running away, hoping that we run into stairs? Or the other option would be to take this downstairs back down to six, try and find a different upstairs and make our way back up to, I guess, floor three. I think the kind of nice middle ground here is we can retreat to the stairs and then see how a couple rounds go here. Maybe take just Blork with us. Oh, I don't think we're in the right spot for hitting Blork. Um, then not another Searing Ray. Wait a second. <laughs> Pushed the wrong thing there. I think I hit one of my num keys accidentally instead of escape to get out of the spell there, but that should be okay. We're gonna do Blork again. Pistachio is gonna come into hmm, melee range with us, which just means that he will follow us down the stairs if we decide to do that, but we could risk the biscuit here because the nice thing about Ustachio at the very least is if we can get him to blink down there 
we can then pop back up and strand him. Because Eustachio is the one I was slightly more concerned about here. So... Do you know what? Let's do one more magic dart. Okay. Turn Blork invisible. Don't love that. But now I'm going to take Eustachio downstairs. And this is kind of scary. And I don't like this. Maybe we will wield ID the trident. Crossing our fingers here. A plus seven vampiric trident with minus five strength. So it does depreciate our damage. Plus six int though is pretty solid. And double negative resistance is also pretty nice. Oh gosh, let's try and not die immediately. Now that we have identified it, shall we? So start with the magic dart. Maybe we'll try a couple swings. Because honestly, if we can hit, we get a little bit of health back. But there we go. We got the blink off of Eustachio. Now we leave. And Blork is standing there even though can't see them. Um, Let's maybe go with just the poison dart since we have no mana here. Didn't look great. See, barely missed. There's something barely missed us. We probably completely missed Blork. I'm just waiting for the time that we throw and we see a dart end up in this square because that means that we actually managed to successfully get a hit. But hmm, how many turns will your invisibility last you, Blork? That's the question here. I'm also working off the assumption that Blork is standing in the same place they chose to stand last time. That might not be right. Almost god tier weapon, right? It's really solid. As long as we can survive the next little bit, but any of these elemental bolts are liable to kill us. We might start some early potion nonsense, or we could start running away. I hope we run into a stairs. You know what? We're already playing with a lot of fire. Oh, do you know what? What I should have actually done is just gone back downstairs maybe even though eustachio versus this it's all pretty bad okay so i decided to quaff a potion should have talked about my decision making maybe before i did it but immediately a potion of attraction which is not good oh gosh draco draco i'm sorry potion of cancellation <laughs> that's also not good how did we get two of each of these okay I mean, we're probably dead here, I'm gonna be honest with you. So unfortunate. We try and get around Blork. Hmm. Then we're just really crossing our fingers and hoping to get lucky. I do kind of want to read one more scroll. Oh, it was identify. I was hoping for maybe if we had two weird rare potions and one of the normal common ones maybe scrolls would have gone the same way but it doesn't seem like it oh and unfortunately we identify potion of haste now when we have two health so maybe all in the hands of rng now the final quaffable potion here if we get a heal wounds that can lead into a haste into a get the heck out of here it was heal wounds TP scroll only save? You know, a TP scroll would probably been a solid idea as well. But right now I think I want to get a couple... I want to get a few steps away while we're hasted here. Just so we're not taking damage from literally everyone around us. And then I was very much tempted... Dang it. To read a scroll. But we're still not fast enough even with the haste, hey? Um, I mean, we can dodge anything. Scroll of Fog, we did dodge everything. One more time? Aww, oh, scroll of Remove Curse, and then we die. Oh no, so that's actually the first since uh, Orc that we got really unlucky with our starting character here in the most dangerous parts of the game where you're still really low health, low magic. But yes, unfortunately, I do think Shaft played into it a bit, but that's all part of the fun here. 
and it definitely happens and will happen again over and over. So there goes the streak, which, well, kind of is a, a bit of a downer at the same time, is uplifting because it means that there's no longer any pressure. We can just relax. We can maybe even fool around a little bit with some of the choices that we make here. But for now, it's okay who's going to be a lame color anyway. Thanks. Yeah, that's the that's the right kind of mental framework to be taking. Nice to stay positive and work on the dragon that's actually going to get us to the end here. I was going to immediately go in with the name Draco the second, but I guess we could think at the very least about switching up our start now. We didn't really give Conjurer a chance though, you know? So I think we will hop in one more time and see how it goes. You go 15 runes. In general, I definitely enjoy trying my best to you every once in a while. On these runs, probably not, just because we have a whole lot of species to get through trying to get um, a victory with each and every one. That unfortunately, it may take quite a long time trying to figure it out here. <laughs> Malfoy, you're right, yeah, Draco the second. Even more fitting, because I thought the same thing with the, the first Draco, but for sure he is a, a junior. Oops, I just keep hitting the same key as it tells me over and over I don't have enough magic. But okay, we ended up starting out facing a dart slug again, so maybe not all that different from the previous run. I did this time around forget to go into backslash and just make sure we're picking up some of these little tidbits lying around just to make sure we get any kind of little advantage we can in order to survive just long enough to get our own power into play here. Unfortunate to miscast our magic dart against our first armed enemy here. Even a hobgoblin with a dagger is potentially enough to uh, end everything here. But there we go, just keep backing up a bit until we're able to take him out with another magic dart. And there we get ourselves a nice little weapon as well. Ooh, this is gonna be a little bit freakier here with only three magic. Not in a great spot. I need to save most of it, I think, for the pop goblin, or for the goblin here, rather. The four plus its weapon versus the three, looking like it. So we'll fight against the jackal in melee combat, which is not something we're built to do whatsoever here. Ouch, yep. Any turn here could be already the end of Draco the second. It's a hard life trying to make it through these brutal dungeons. But I guess that's what you get. You know what you're going in for when you sign up for a delve into the dungeons of Zot here. But okay. First tricky situation dealt with here. And now we also have access again to Searing Ray, one of our favorite conjuration spells. So let's snap grab that. Give ourselves another option, and of course just being up to 5 magic points now is going to be a huge little boost. At least we're a little bit more likely to be able to take out packs of simple goblins and hobgoblins. Jackals as well, I guess, kind of included in that same grouping. Ooh, let's not target ourselves with anything. There we go. Hopefully, we, at the very start, get a fairly similar one to our last run. Also, I just realized I've been getting streak victories since I started posting the uh, seeds on these games. I'm not used to having to do this in the middle of uh, a stream here, but I totally forgot to replace the game seed here. So we'll do that. You know, I guess for the one that's on screen right now, if anyone really wants to uh, check out using that vampiric trident, that's a pretty solid siege, even if just for that weapon showing up nice and early. Let's pop ourselves in. The brand new siege. And there we go. If you ever get to the fourth, then you can be Ivan Drago from Rocky. <laughs> I know dated reference. Is that already a dated reference? Is it not? in some senses a, a timeless reference because it is an older movie for sure and definitely not one that's critical viewing for all audiences necessarily but i feel like rocky holds its own 
status in the zeitgeist of the public. Because I don't even know the Rocky movies that well, but I feel like I can quote them with the, the best of them. Just in order to keep up with the, the pulp culture references. Okie dokie, first little wormy boy again here. Maybe should have used it as a chance to test out Siren Ray again. That was kind of nice. Last run. I think Rocky is a legit good movie, yeah. No, I definitely, yeah, heard the same. Obviously, some of the sequels, not so much, but that's to be expected with most series, especially if they go on for that many. Going to be some misses in there, but also some solid ones as well. Trying to rack my brain a little bit for the, like, go-to which Rocky movies are people's favorites. Because it's like, Rocky 1 is classic. Is Rocky 2 well-beloved? Hmm. Because Rocky 4 is where a lot of people, like, uh, heard about it from. At least I know that's, like, probably the first movie where I started to hear a lot about it or see a lot of uh, scenes from, in quotes. But okay, popping everything into intelligence here and making our way through D2 for the second time. Things are going all right. I guess maybe our D2 altar will be something a little bit more up our alley this go around. So that's not all bad. Ooh, D2 null, that is pretty much all bad. So let's run back. You buddies should also get slowed down in the water. Then maybe we'll take advantage of the fact that they'll be fighting in the water and hope that a few blasts... Perfect. If Siren Ray are enough to do the trick is how it's going to finish that sentence, but... Before I even got the chance, Siren Ray had done its work. Well and through. Maybe I shouldn't walk towards enemies and instead try and tip off a quick uh, couple darts. Oh gosh. Never mind, let's run. I thought this might be just a couple gnolls that we managed to encounter here, but at least three, so that's a little bit scarier. Oh, I guess it was a, a negative three halberd, so maybe not quite as scary as my mind was immediately giving it credit for, but always better to play it a little bit safe here. I will definitely pick up a short sword of venom, though. That's a nice little get in the early dungeon here. Not quite as good as a vampiric trident but it's definitely something and especially something a little bit safer than requiring us to be shafted all the way down to floor six just to find it but okay d2 sif muna altar i don't think i can say no to this like this is a, a gift horse just showing up on our doorstep here can't look it in the mouth right i was thinking about trying out a sif muna run i actually haven't uh had her as a goddess since some of the reworks here. Specifically, the ability to call upon Sif Muna to cast any spell from your library. I believe this is Exogenesis, something like that. But that sounds very interesting to me, giving you the ability to cast level 9 spells just out of your butt here if you need to. So, yeah, I don't think all the... The signs are clicking to yes in my brain, so let's try it out. See how Sif Muna does us here. I guess the other kind of major features and points here, the channel mana ability is pretty solid. It's a little more straightforwardly reliable in some ways than Vehemoth's mana on kills, because mana on kills, you need that like popcorn little enemies all around in order to take advantage of that fully, but being able to use invocations to replenish our mana in emergencies, definitely not sad. Uh, not bad, I should say. Definitely not sad either, though. And finally, Sivmuna will also gift us books, so you're almost guaranteed to come across every single spell in the game by the time you get to uh, even the end of a three rune. But, all right. Down to D3, this is where things started to go a little bit sketchy last time. So let's just cross our fingers for uh, no shafts. No shafts this time. Or actually, I don't need mine shaft that much, as long as it doesn't take us too far down. 
Or if it drops us right next to stairs, then it's like a fun little adrenaline boost without any real co consequences. So that could be fun. I like my DCSS gameplay to be consequence free. Doesn't really happen ever, but it'd be fun, right? It's a, a good dream to have. We'll keep it moving here. Slowly but surely, catching up to uh, your predecessor, Draco II here. A little bit more varied in terms of number of potions picked up here, but scrolls are looking a little bit wonky, already up to seven in one department. I'm guessing that's identify, even though you never know when the game will throw you a little bit of a curveball in that regard. You can end up with some wacky large stacks on the first floor. You know what? Magic Dart's gonna do it, just so we don't have to chase that buddy down. There we go. Okay, so we fell into a shaft. <laughs> Dropped two floors, but... Oh, and there's an ossuary here. Oh, you son of a gun. Huh, we're on D5. Don't really want to be stumbling around D5 when I'm level 4. You're never a great sign when your experience level is lower than the floor of the dungeon you're on. Um, hmm. I do really want to check out the ossuary though. That's at least a treasure or a time portal that we could potentially handle depending on which one we got. But regardless, we're walking around for a little bit here, at least at the very least, until we find ourselves some stairs. Oh, it's nearby. Hear the hissing flow of sand. Nearby. Let's check this way. No. So let's head back this way. We'll do a little bit of click action here. Hop, hop, hop. Should be a little bit slower here because I know that I'm definitely want to sometimes foolishly walk into danger. But, holy cow. We have the opportunity to go into Yasuari here. Is it a good idea? Some would debate. Let's at least poke our heads in. We can always run away, right? Um, let a, a quick shout. Hello? Perfect. Yeah, it's already looking like we might have to run away. I don't have the sustainability for this. I guess maybe shouting was a wrong idea. In my head, I was thinking that magic makes so much noise that we may as well lose out a, a shout instead. But upon thinking about it just a little bit more, I realize my shouts are probably a little bit louder than a nearly silent magic dart. Is that, yeah, almost silent. So maybe could have tried to space these buddies out, but right now I'm mostly scared the mummy. Potentially want to get the searing ray effect going. You know what? I think with searing ray in our pocket being the only reason why I'm even entertaining this thought, we can at least see if we can take out a few of these buddies in one go here. Ideally, that mummy gets taken out because I don't want something hitting me for 20 damage. That's not very cool. Okay, so that's a really good start. That's still in the Searing Ray. Beauty. Love to see it. Okay. So, unless this human zombie kills us, which, oh gosh, was more possible than I first expected. Maybe I should have switched over to using my spells a little bit quicker here. Oh gosh. Now we've been found again immediately as we finish that fight. So... Do I want to leave? I guess the advantage to zombies is that they can't follow us anyway. Now, see, so yeah, only four damage max. We can hold out a little bit longer. There we go. So maybe, just maybe, the shaft won't have completely screwed us over here. We'll see. Still, I'm guessing at least one more plain big zombie here. I <laughs> never didn't have it. Read my mind. Yeah, no, never a doubt. 
I play it up, you know, for the sake of the viewers. I want there to be drama, so I, I pretend to be worried and concerned, but we all know how these runs are going to end up. I mean, that last one was just, you know, you also want to lose every once in a while. Wouldn't want to make the viewers jealous of my impressive skill to never lose. So, you know, we throw in the occasional one just for fun here. But in all seriousness, ossuaries are so interesting. They're usually pretty straightforward and not too tricky. But every once in a while, on a weak caster character like this, a few unlucky misses with your spells and things can go pretty sour pretty quick. Gives a lot more flavor to the run at the very least. Because on the same token as all this, so many of the, the previous runs that we've had in this uh, streak of trying to get victories here, have had early moments of exceptionally near-death experiences. And somehow, if we manage to make it through those, maybe it hardens our hearts a little bit, gives us courage moving forward, some kind of psychological benefit that uh, sees us through the rest of the run. The flip side of that being the, things like the last run, where those near-death experiences just become death experiences shortly afterwards. So it apparently it doesn't have a 100% hit rate, but... Oh, whoops. <laughs> Should have realized that Auto Explore would take me right back the way that it just did. I guess maybe I should fight these jackals. I'm able to take them at the very least. Oh, hello? <laughs> apparently set them all a-wandering here. Hello? Oh, no. Notice me? Notice me. <laughs> Finally. But no, with a Venom weapon, I'm not too scared of the Jackals, and they give us a little bit of a chance to gain a little experience we can on this floor before we find something truly scary that we just have to run away from. And oh me oh my, would you look at that. I think last week I was just talking with a, one of the, our viewers about this item in particular here. The plus 27 Leers Hauberk, I think that's Hauberk, Aubert. I'm not actually sure. I don't think I've said that word out loud before. I'm going to say Halberk, though. Definitely feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Always glad to learn the proper way to pronounce things, but liable to mess it up again hundred times over. But unfortunately, we can't wear this. It's always going to be runs on Draconians, Trolls, and Felids, eh? Just the way you got to be, DZSS. So, unfortunately, no Leers Hallberg for us. Ooh, I don't like this. Let's back up. The ant will gain ground, but we can get a Searing Ray going, and that answer very much to us what adders are to a character going into D2 right now, so let's do our very best not to uh, get any poison nonsense. Dang it. Another downstairs. Pretty much everything this direction is no good. Let's head this way, maybe. See some better luck. Ooh, a little altar shrine. Very cool. It's back up in the hallway. No need to waste any of our magic points on this fight at the very least. Normally I'd be extremely happy to see a Gozeg altar. D4. Of course, we are also already just completely happy in our own faith here. Sif Moon is the one true deity of hold the land and though again no clue if the pantheons get along a little bit more than that besides i guess the obvious examples of the uh the shining trio the trio of light i don't know is there there's probably a name that the community has come up with for the uh the good gods right the big three but okay we've also finally made it back up to d3 would you look at that our shaft went slightly better this time around. Woohoo. Ooh. And we got the wizard starting handbook just sitting on the ground here. That's pretty awesome. I wouldn't mind Mephitic Cloud. Blink is also a pretty solid thing to pick up. Especially since that will uh, kind of synergize with learning IMB here with the translocations anyway. So that's pretty solid. 
And in fact, I might just learn Blink now, because that should be castable real quick. And so I can set translocations just to a, a 5 for now. We'll see where that takes it. But I think that'll be castable pretty quickly. And then shortly after that, we should gain access to IMB, which will guarantee us a little bit more success than our forebearer here, at least in terms of just being able to shove enemies off a little bit. Cloud is nice. No, exactly. Mephitic Cloud is also really solid. Now, it's not often that you find that early of a spellbook, and it ends up being something that you're actually able to potentially put into use right away. Also, we got this cool little Fedhas altar spawn again. Very cute. Ooh, as for you... So I want to get to the stairs, and then ideally, I'd like to kill Dallin. Because if I can get Duvessa raging, and then just hightail it out of there until it's done, then everything shall work out just peachy for us. So I guess the flip side of that is like Seer and Ray. Try and hit them all at once. I don't like... Oh, Duvessa's going to be right next to me in Raging. Yeah, actually it turns out that we might kill Duvessa first. So, we're actually going to keep this up. Okay, we killed them both at the same time. So, that totally worked out just fine. A little bit riskier, maybe, than I should have played it. But hey, we're no longer streaking anymore. Let's get a little bit weird with it, right? But that's a whole bunch of levels, and... But you look at that, level 7 is ours, and we turn an icy white color. So, not only have our aptitudes shifted around a little bit, we've also gained a single pip of cold resistance and a, our breath weapon here. So we can now breathe frost, which is going to be pretty solid, and may knock back airborne targets. I didn't know that that was even a thing. Huh. But there we go. That's always the goal with a draconian, is just get to at least... Uh, level 7 and then with your breath weapon that will usually help out a decent of it or be another little uh, panic button option that doesn't require mana right let's make sure I'm not lying about that but that doesn't require mana so that's really nice on a caster here and additionally I guess yeah we can pop up here you can buff it flying creatures when you breathe cold perfect we saw that and our ac is up to six that's what i was going here to check just to take a peek at how we were looking i guess it doesn't seem quite as impressive when last time around we managed to find an early hat that we could wear and a uh, pair of gloves so we were at the same ac or actually a higher ac on that run already but still definitely is something that we can use here for sure oh gosh searing raid wasn't quite as successful as i was initially hoping here but now that we have them all lined up the nice thing is we don't have to worry too much about the invisible buddy in particular because this will just hit everybody and one more perfect timing on the searing rays there as well it's really too bad that we can't wear robes. Wow, and that's a translocations book that we have gained here as well. So we can really try and take advantage of our translocation training here if we'd like to. I don't know how much we would. I'm not super familiar with the, the middle stuff. I would love to see something like Controlled Blink showing up in the future and maybe give that a go for the first time. But, uh, especially now that it's fully usable in Zot, and we'll almost definitely save our butt over and over again. But hey, Fail Fink, how's it going? Hope you're having a good one. Okie dokie. So the run continues. Just a wee bit longer than the first here, at the very least. But I'm feeling a little bit more solid as well just with the options that have been brought up before us here even just finding the d2 sif moon altar on its own i think gives me the the boost of confidence i needed to get through it all and surviving the there's a similar degree of shafting i guess but okay we have a whole lot of 
potions here. Nothing in high stacks, unfortunately. So no really obvious um, picks for what would be heal wounds. But I'm hoping this is 11 identified. It won't be a problem here. And it is a scroll of identify. So that's quite awesome. We might actually be able to get quite a few of these um, identified here and have a few options in case things go a little bit sour. You good things myself. I'm doing quite well. We had an unfortunate loss early today, so the streak is dead. Long live the streak. But uh, we're on to the next here, and things are already looking up. So just have to keep doing the DCSS way of pushing through any defeats here. It will be just trying to think of the exact opposite of far and few between would be close and many between doesn't quite translate very well <laughs> doesn't sound like i'm saying much of anything hmm, are there ice conjurations or is elementalist it so yeah for the starting you're just going to be one or the other but there are definitely spells that combine the two schools that you can find in the higher level books so definitely will be what we're kind of branching off into here. I guess we didn't even, upon hitting level 7, we didn't even fully examine the changes that were made in our skills here. And so we do have the plus 2 aptitude in ice magic now, so almost definitely something we'll be pivoting into. Maybe this will be the run that I finally get to try out Absolute Zero for the first time. Still haven't done that, but uh means that we won't be casting fire magic most likely on the flip side of that i guess but that's all good that's why i didn't want to pick fire elementalist off the back our scales turn white and all of a sudden we're stuck in a little bit of an awkward situation but uh tell me about sif muna i forgot the gods in this so yeah sif is one of the main two casting gods here the main abilities are right away here. We gain the ability to channel for mana that is based off invocation skills, so it requires a little bit of training to get off the ground. Uh, but then afterwards, she will also allow you to do the effect of an amnesia scroll, I believe, at the cost of some piety. Also, let's not walk towards a bear. Jeez Louise. <laughs> um, but it allows you to, yeah, forget spells, kind of like the amnesia scroll. And then, I don't like being marked here. <laughs> I keep trying to talk about this and then scary stuff happens in the game and I have to pause for a moment. Dang it, our ray is not hitting. We'll have to get through this ogre fight before we keep going into the Sif Muna because, oh, that spike club, just a wee bit scary. And of course, Sky Beast also. Sure love those noise traps. But there we go, okay, Ooh, maybe survived through this little starter situation here. Um, so where were we? I guess forgetting spells, uh, one of the best or better abilities that uh, Sif has as well at the higher levels is Divine Exegenesis or Divine Exegesis, something like that. And that allows you to cast any spell from your spell book. So it's not from memorized spells, it's from this list here. And you can just kind of pluck one out and cast it using some PAD as well. Um, so that's pretty solid for being able to cast stuff that's completely outside of your wheelhouse and take care of some of the things that might have resistances to whatever your main dealio is, maybe. And then I guess the, the final thing is that at close to max piety, Sif starts gifting spellbooks. So by taking her as your deity here, you're pretty much guaranteed to find every single spell in the game, even in a three rune game here, depending on how quickly we're able to uh, get some piety pips. Jeez, thought we could take at least one hit from the ogre, which I guess is technically true. We did take one hit from the ogre, but it looked like that was about it. Fortunately, got some random energy. Seer and Ray does the trick. Let's try not to do anything quite so silly again. No reason to let any giant enemies hit us even a single time, I guess. Also, you're right. Yeah, I didn't mention it, but Sifid or Safid, thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate it a lot. Actually, somehow getting relatively close to hitting the uh, magic number to become an affiliate here on Twitch which 
It was not something I ever really expected. So I'm very appreciative to all of you who have uh, followed me and come along for these fun little rides and especially, yeah, chat and have some fun.